hello, Merry Christmas to you, Pastor Dale Witherington, and Merry Christmas to all who may be watching. We're in a point in the winter where it's time to have long fireside chats and conversations and a cup of wassail and uh, review the year that's behind us and maybe talk about things that are on our minds and uh, looking toward the future. Um, this has been a wacky year with the lockdown being extended. For me, it's been kind of a mixed blessing because uh, lots more activities are taking place online and that's how, that's a good thing. But um, this extended lockdown we're under, here's December 3rd. We had a crazy election year, a, a three month long process instead of an election day. We might wanna talk about some of those things and, and Pastor Dale Witherington, anything else that might be on your mind in terms of saying goodbye to 2020. <laughs> <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you as well, Wes, and uh, to to folks listening in or watching in on the uh, rebroadcast as you uh, check it with your social media. It's good to be with you. Thank you, sir. Good as always. I'm looking forward to a good conversation. It's uh, it's what winter's for. Those long winter evenings. Yeah, it's a we'll great see where tradition. This goes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, the election, I think a lot of us had felt that it would be over with by now, <laughs> but <laughs> the way that things were being set up, uh, we have to say I told you so a little bit with all the mail-in ballots in Minnesota, and then uh, uh, Jennifer Carnahan of the GOP called for a statewide audit of the vote in every single county, and I was on that conference call, but uh, here in Olmstead County, the auditors were forced to stay some 15 feet back from the ballots they were expected to audit. So uh, we still don't know <laughs> who signed or who applied for the absentee ballots and who actually ended up using them or voting or where they were printed. So it's raised more questions. I'm hopeful though, and I wonder if you share my optimism that this process that the Democrats have put us through in terms of an election half year instead of election day, if this process isn't going to bring over from the remnants of the DFL the last of the really good people who are over there on that side thinking this isn't the party of my grandfather, this isn't the party of my grandmother, you know, um, it's time to walk away, hashtag walk away from the Democrat Party, possibly for good, because this is seeming to be the... I think President Trump is the last legitimately elected president at this point. <laughs> Well, why don't we stoke the flames just a little bit? I, I'm not going to blame it on the Democrats. Uh, I agree with you. I think there are a few um, good Democrats who are true Democrats. I'm going to blame this on the part of the Democratic Party who are truly Democratic socialists and outright communists. Uh, this, this mess that we're going through is not because of the true Democratic Party. This is because of communists, socialists, uh, both foreign and domestic, who are trying to fundamentally change the United States of America. And uh, I, I don't think we should be surprised that we don't have election results to this point. You know, everybody keeps pointing back to the Bush-Gore days of uh, 2000, and it took 37 days before uh, that election could be done because of the hanging chads in one state, in Florida. Well, here we've got multiple states going on with, uh, at minimum, uh, 225 lawsuits, and only a few of them have been addressed to this point. Uh, the, the people I talk with, the sources I have some connection with, uh, we're being told that we might not know the results until two, until two days before the inauguration. That would be January 18th. So I think that we need to sit back, take a breath, and allow the legal processes to run the course. And as a result of legal processes, then we'll come up with a conclusion. And hopefully, the conclusion will be a saving and continuation of our constitutional republic and not a fundamental unraveling, which is what the far left is attempting to do. Definitely. Have you watched with interest some of those testimonies being given? Uh, you know, many, many affidavits, people swearing and attesting to what they saw. I watched Georgia a little bit yesterday. I've tuned into Michigan. I watched Pennsylvania. 
everything. Now, Nevada, the testimonies are heart wrenching. The things that people went through and they saw happening, and they were powerless to do anything about it. And supervisors had gone home and they weren't around. And uh, USBs loaded into the same machine repeatedly. Uh, votes, stacks of votes uh, being fed into machines over and over again. Um, any of those testimonies jump out at you or any of the stories? Uh, well, I think that the, the testimony that jumps out most to me comes from someone that I'm close to in the business world. And this is of a young single mom uh, living in Michigan who decided she wanted to sell her business, sell her home, and start life over again in Arizona. So she went down to Arizona, did all the necessary things to uh, create residency so she could vote when she got to Arizona. She went back home to Michigan, packed up her, her truck, packed up her uh, baby and dog, and, and drove in, in a U-Haul truck for two days to get to Arizona. And she arrived at the polling place somewhere about 21 minutes before it was due to close. And instead of being handed the official style pen that you're supposed to use to fill out a ballot, uh, she was handed a Sharpie. And we know the Sharpies don't work. We know there's been allegations about Sharpie. Well, she was handed a Sharpie. Uh, she was not aware of the issues that the Sharpies create. So she used her Sharpie, but after she had her ballot filled out, she walked up to stick it into the ballot box, and the election judges prohibited her from sticking it in the box because the clock had struck eight. And the polling place was now closed, even though she'd been in there plenty of time and was voting. Um, they prohibited her, and she argued uh, to no avail. She was going to stick it in the box, but they wouldn't let her. They were going to take the ballots, they said, and they're, they're going to collect uh, the remaining ballots. They're going to bind them together, put them in an envelope. And they gave her the website that she could go to to track the vote. Her ballot would be counted. I received this information, um, what's today, Thursday the 3rd, on, on Sunday or Monday. So it was... Uh, you know, Thanksgiving weekend, the end of Thanksgiving weekend, beginning of this week, three, four days ago. And she is still checking Arizona's balloting and her vote has still not been counted. So that stack of votes, um, who knows what's happened to them. So there, there are those kinds of stories, Wes, that um, are creating an awful lot of um, of pain and uh, suspicion is probably is maybe the better word. Uh, an awful lot of suspicion as to what really is going on in this world of voter fraud. Uh, you know, we live in Minnesota. We've been living with voter fraud for a long time. And uh, unfortunately, our powers to be here have got uh, the system down so well that it's hard to um, bring out the evidence and, and, and bring any kind of charges. Um, they're, they're doing it really well here, here. Uh, but it's there. We know it's there. And it's stories like this young gal, it's stories like some of these other testimonies from people who have been dramatically affected. It's stories of people who voted and they've been dead for a decade or longer. Uh, you know, great, great to have them back to life. I'm just not sure they can come back to life only when it's time to vote. Right. So, so these are the kinds of things that are causing suspicion concern and hopefully um, as uh, Giuliani and Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood as they continue the legal processes uh, and I think that's what's really important for people to understand what's going on is not a sitting president refusing simply refusing to accept election results what's going on is the proof that there are no election results and that they are being manipulated, they are being illegally handled. Uh, that is proven over and over again. So now it's a matter of how corrupt are the court systems? Um, how good is the evidence? How corrupt are the court systems? Will the court systems accept it? 
And it's a process that will take time. So I, I think that uh, it's going to play out. I'm hopeful still that justice will be served, that truth will prevail. And whatever that truth is, as long as it's the truth, and the American people can feel confident that we have finally received accurate, truthful information, we'll all be ready to move on. And if Donald Trump is reelected, uh, if Donald Trump is reelected, then um, we need to, to let's do let's do what the other side is saying. We need to unite as a country. Um, hmm. we, do, we don't need to go to a second round of. Let's have college safe spaces and your blankies and hot chocolate and your support puppies because Donald Trump won. Um, let's unite as a country. The left is telling us we should be uniting for the first time in five years. They're talking about <laughs> uniting because they believe that Joe Biden is the president elect and Kamala Harris is the vice president elect. And the fact of the matter is they are not. He is not the president elect. She is not the vice president elect. No matter what the media tells you, the media doesn't get to declare who our president and vice president elect are. It's the election process. And once that gets done, let's get the truth out. And if we find there's corruption, and I believe we will, if we find that there's been manipulation and voter fraud, and I believe we will, I'm hopeful that we can get to the deepest level of who the perpetrators of that illegality would be and those people need to be charged and brought to justice whatever that looks like that's right so, it, it's remarkable that that uh biden did so well amongst the zombie vote he had people born in 1800 and 1820 suddenly turn up to vote, but this friend of yours who's moved and gone out of her way to great pains to make sure she's legally registered and entitled to vote and turns up at the polling place and she's denied her franchise. Um, these, it is astonishing what's taking place. Um, it may be that the American people are the real losers for this when we uh, come to question the sanctity of our voting process, but hopefully um, there will be an opportunity to introduce measures that will make sure this kind of thing never happens again. For instance, why not voter ID? Why not uh, re voter registration and you turn up or you have a very uh, compelling uh, background story in the event that you absolutely can't make it on election day? You know, if you're serving in the military, for instance, overseas, right? How, how did you feel? You mentioned a little bit about uh Biden not being president elect. How did you feel when you saw that poster, that that poster with the uh, office of the president elect over his shoulder? Because there is no such office. There's no such constitutional. <laughs> it bestows upon himself a title that literally doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it doesn't matter how I feel. I yeah. just look at that and shake my head to say this is just another. Uh, way to manipulate the mindset of Americans who either uh, their greatest desire is to see him as president. And so to see that sign is all warm and fuzzy and confirming when they don't realize they're being mentally manipulated by forces that hate America. Um, you know, and, and so if we don't understand the game that is being played against the American people, uh, buy into um, the, the mindset and the narrative that's coming from the media. And I don't care if we're talking Fox or CNN or any of the other you know, mainstream media sources, the, the nightly news kind of groups. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's the money behind those groups. It is the people behind those groups that are seeking to create a globalist mentality. And that is not a Dale opinion. Uh, that, that's a well-substantiated factual statement I just made. Uh, what we're fighting against right now is not whether Donald Trump is president or whether Joe Biden is president. What we're fighting for is the sovereignty of America as a nation. What we're fighting for is whether or not we're going to be called into a globalist structure 
that does not allow us to function as a free, legitimate nation any longer. And if people don't understand that, they need to go back and study what's going on. And we need to determine that we're going to fight for our country. And that's exactly that's exactly what's going on right now, as you know. So the issue isn't whether we're going to continue to fight for our nation. It's how are we going to continue to fight for our nation? Um, because depending on who gets in office, we'll determine what kind of freedoms we have in order to do that. Well, there's, you mentioned a little bit about the media. There's so much information available about the Dominion software, its production for Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, its use in several elections there to defraud the Venezuelan people. Um, uh, there's so much about the servers. Uh, I think that's a little borderline conspiracy if you talk about the servers being uh, seized in, in Europe, Germany, Spain. However, they have some forensic data that the votes were being counted and tabulated in Europe and then returning back to the United States. It's just maddening to think that our elections, the, the sanctity of our franchise is in any way influenced by another country or being handled or trafficked by another country. And then um, all of that information that's available, there's just a, a ton, oh, by the way, all of those uh, uh, state hearings, the Senate hearings that we mentioned, for instance, Nevada, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, those are all available in their entirety online at rightsidebroadcasting.com and uh, the Epic Times. And if someone wants to dispute the information and the data, they could sit down and watch Giuliani present and watch the uh, lawyer Lynn present. And uh, uh, so, pardon me, I forgot her name. Uh, Sydney Patriot. Powell. Yes, yeah, Sydney Powell. Watch her compelling information yeah. she presents and decide for yourself if all of these people lined up are lying. By the way, the media's given us a mantra of uh, Russia, Russia, Russia for four years. And $49 million was spent in investigations and nothing was discovered. Whereas whereas all of these persons, now, are we expected to believe that the party who said fraud for four years without any evidence now suddenly flips and says, this is absolutely nothing to see here, folks. It's a right. perfect election. Isn't that well, especially especially when our president elect so called and that's not what he is yet. Um, but but what happened to the Hunter Biden story during these last couple of weeks when yeah. when we know that the man has has ties to Ukraine and directly to China and and there's tremendous financial benefit All, here. This is the, the leftist tactic. The leftist tactic is always to accuse the other side for what the left is already doing. And by accusing the other side, you're sending the shiny object in that direction so you can continue to do over here what you're accusing your opponent of doing. Whether your opponent is doing it or not, your opponent is now the shiny object. Everybody goes over here and you can keep working underground. And that's, that's the exact tactic that happened. And when you bring up the uh, Dominion machines earlier today, uh, front site training, uh, who've, who've got some great newsletters, uh, showed a video clip. It was a, a short. But it was a clip that CNN did in 2006. Now, can we agree that CNN is no friend of Donald Trump and no friend of the, the political right? Can we agree to that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> CNN in 2006 did exactly what the right and Donald Trump's legal team are trying to do right now. They've got, we, I just watched a video report that CNN did showing the company Smartmatic, which came out of Venezuela and has got a headquarters and a uh, stateside headquarters in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, but they've only got about 15 employees there because most of their employees, according to their American president, uh, it, most of their employees are in Venezuela. And CNN did the report from Venezuela to demonstrate how those machines 
were used fraudulently to take Hugo Chavez, the man who destroyed Venezuela, and put them under a dictatorship. Uh, they took him the night of the election when he was losing 59% to 41%. When people woke up the next morning, they were celebrating, and he was celebrating from his palace that he won 59% to 41%. They used the machines overnight to flip the votes, and CNN was right on the forefront of demonstrating how those machines were being used in election fraud. I'm wondering how come CNN's not doing the same thing today. It's truly astonishing. And, and why on earth our counties would contract with such an entity to, uh, we, we have five counties in Minnesota that use Dominion software. I have that on authority. And uh, we don't know much else about the practices that were used for data protection in Minnesota. But um, when we have to stand 15 feet away from the ballots, it's not likely we're going to find out anything too soon about it's, what took it's place. It's tough to count from 15 feet away. <laughs> yeah. One, one of the individuals said that she would have needed a binoculars to see the ballots. Yeah. And why that was done, there's no answer forthcoming from uh, officials. So I, I need to kind of check that story out as well, follow, follow up on that. But CNN, all of these uh, broadcasting groups are doing us a tremendous disservice by spreading the misinformation and disinformation. They're going to make it harder. They should be educating the public as to the facts right now about the very legitimate questions that are being raised uh, about the elections, not just in those contested states, but throughout the United States. If there was election fraud anywhere, it's bad enough. But uh, the damage that they'll do is to have people lose faith in the process. That could be permanent damage. Yeah, unfortunately, you just used a phrase that is now an oxymoron, it seems, when it comes from the media, and that is stating facts. Um, the, it, it seems that no matter who the media is, CNN, Fox, CNBC, NBC, CBS, ABC. Um, I, I don't know if I'm missing any. Uh, journalism seems to have moved. Well, it, it, it's been moving this way for at least 50 years, but we've, we've just arrived at some new points. And that is we don't know any longer the pretty fast actual fact or telling us their opinion disguised as fact, and where the opinion is right or wrong, uh, the style in which they deliver, and they have become celebrities. They've become entertainment celebrities in the news, and it's just like fan celebrities of, uh, or fans of the Hollywood celebrities. Uh, the, new, the news media is in that uh, ilk right now, and consequently, if we've got a favorite news reporter or a group of news team, just like we have favorite uh, Hollywood celebrities, if they say it, it must be true. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is they're stating a lot of untruths. They are purporting a lot of lies to the American public and, and the American, we're buying it. So we, we have got to use the legal processes um, as best as possible to find out what really is the truth. And, and that's what I'm hopeful for. I am hopeful that by the time Giuliani, Linwood, and Powell are done, that we will have factual data that says this is the truth, and in fact, it will be the truth. I think Americans are going to be really fine no matter what the truth is, as long as it really is the truth. That's a great point. And isn't it funny how the media will uh, create truth by making sure that 100 or 200 media outlets receive the same memo? The mockingbird media is a real yeah. thing. You, know? you, you can sync up the speeches that these announcers gave about the election results, yes. for instance, yes. and they, all 150 of the talking heads were in sync with a memo that they were reading out at, at 
stations, local stations all across the United States. And they, these were, uh, so a memo went out, this is what you'll say. Whereas original source material is, is hard to find. So I went looking for uh, President Trump's speech of yesterday that he gave at the White House. He gave a very important, like, 45-minute speech. Yes. And I wanted to watch it directly. And everywhere I searched, all of the search results were uh, like a three-minute story about his speech or commentary about his speech. You know, I want the original source material. And I found it eventually at uh, Donald Trump at his own YouTube channel. And uh, it's also posted, I think, on Right Side Broadcasting. But you have That's to go. I think, look. I think he had a hard time finding original source material because I've been told that he did that speech with no no members of the press corps in the room. That he actually uh, wanted to make sure that he could do his speech and get it posted before it hit any of the mainstream media, and they could twist it. Uh, that way, his whole speech was out into the public. Um, uncensored, undoctored, and exactly as he said it. So I think that's, I think what you got there when you got to at real Donald Trump or at, the, at his, yeah. right? that's, that's why. Yeah, I, I found it, but it was not easy to, it should be the top hit. And I knew how to search to, to have it come sure. up, but they don't seem to want you to hear, you know, you can't get your water from the well. You're supposed to wait for them to do whatever they do with it. Well, did you have a, a thought about, I mean, are you optimistic that he's going to win? You don't mind. You just want the truth, right? I mean, if, let's say, is it tenable that Biden really won this election? Can we believe that 80 million people voted for Biden? I, I almost find it a little bit difficult to believe that's that's possible, given his lack of campaigning, his lack of coherence and sentence structure, Um he doesn't seem to have any skills in terms of leadership, you know, 47 years in there, and now he's going to fix it for us. Well, good people uh, have really from voted the, for him. from the data I have. Number one, no, I don't believe 80 million Americans voted for Joe Biden. I don't think it's even close. Um, I'm not even sure it hit 60 million. Um, one of the uh, reports that I saw indicated that uh, when Barack Obama won, and I don't remember whether it was his first time or second time, but uh, he won with a the lowest county count of any president in history. And it was some, somewhere in the neighborhood of 67, 68, 69 counties across the country. And Biden apparently only won somewhere in the neighborhood of 47 counties in the country. So if he only won, if he only won 47 counties, there's no possible way he received 80 million votes. Um, <laughs> the numbers, the numbers just don't add up. They also don't add up in the fact that um, the, the left believed that there was going to be this huge blue wave going through the House and the Senate. And they've not only been shocked when that didn't happen they've they've been shocked that they lost seats that they didn't know they were going to lose and and there was more of a red wave even if it was a small one much more of a red wave in the house and we're still waiting to get final results in the senate to see if uh see if republicans are going to maintain the majority uh but it, it's intriguing that where all of the Republicans were winning congressional and Senate seats and where um, Republicans were winning in their state legislatures, that Joe Biden supposedly was getting the presidential votes. So the, the, the intimation there is that millions and millions and millions of Americans voted for Joe Biden and then they voted for every other Republican on the ticket. Uh, how does that add up? It doesn't. So, so again, I'm stating things that are the big question marks um, in trying to answer your question it, it, that fuel my beliefs uh, that there is so much fraud here. And I'm only hoping that, um, again, the truth is going to prevail. And when we get the truth, we're going to show that Donald Trump really did win 
And on one of the calls I was on the other night, the uh, person on the call who is inside all this mess said that if the truth comes out, we're going to discover that Donald Trump won anywhere from 350 to 400 electoral college votes. Yeah. He, he won in a, an absolute landslide. Yes. Um, but that's why we have to wait for the legal process to play out. And that's why he hasn't conceded. They've got information that yeah. they're only slowly letting us know about because the American people are, are upset that we're, we don't have answers yet. So they've got to at least feed us something to let us know, hey, we've got to go with the process. Hang in there. It's going to take a while. But but let's go with the process. Yeah. Yeah. That will that will be the best. Go with the process. Let the yeah. process work. Believe in that. And then uh, when the truth comes out, and I believe Trump will win handily, um, there needs to be some follow up <laughs> in terms of finding the people who did this to the United States of America and to us, all of us, Absolutely. Democrat and Republican that um, our votes were being played with by some entities. And uh, there's all kinds of names that have been mentioned. And Soros's name has come up and his deputies. And then, of course, Nancy Pelosi's husband owns controlling interest in part of uh, in uh, the Dominion software uh, program itself. So what are the links to Nancy and her husband? It's, it's truly bizarre a world that we're yeah, in. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yes, the the Trump show has been entertaining, if nothing else. But it, what it's doing is just leading to the the greater good, isn't it? Well, I is hope it? so. You know, our elected officials take an oath that they're going to protect our, uh, protect our constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we clearly have enemies. And I'm hopeful that those who are in office are st are going to stick to defending the constitution of the United States of America and work to find out who those enemies are. And I think the phrase is drain the swamp. That swamp still needs to get drained. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, the, there's all kinds of beliefs about, you know, Pelosi, Schiff, Schumer, Waters, uh, Newsom, I mean, California. And yet, and yet that state is so upset with their leaders that I think they flipped, uh, they flipped some Democrat seats to Republican. And I'm not here to promote Republican over Democrat so much as to say that there is a left-leaning force, and some of them call themselves Democrats, and they're not. Uh, Maxine Waters at one time made it clear she's a socialist. Uh, Bernie Sanders leads the Socialist Party. Um, AOC, Democratic Socialist. Um, these are the people, the, the whole squad. Uh, these are the people who are trying to take over our nation and recreate it in an image of socialism that has never worked anywhere in history, even when we tried it in the United States in the early days. We're not a socialist nation because we already tried it. We know it doesn't work. So, so we don't need enemies within. Now, since these people are elected, who's really at fault? Who's really at fault are the American people for electing these people and putting them into office unless we can prove election fraud and voter fraud in those cases as well. Um, otherwise, we have to take responsibility for putting people of bad character and enemies of the United States into office, and we need to clean up election fraud. We need to protect our system. We need to protect the Electoral College. And then we need to elect people who are virtuous, who've got good reputation, who have got the best interests of our nation in mind. And we need to put those people in the office. Well said, sir. And I, I think that would be a good moment to end this segment because I think you made a compelling case for protecting our republic. And it's a good place to to leap off sure. let me let me ask you one final question before we close um do you have a special christmas tradition that you bring back every year at this time and how are you keeping that special this year and how are you embracing that for me it's christmas carols so i'm doing caroling i'm on my third week of christmas caroling around town 
hospitals, nursing homes, long-term care facilities. It's a captive audience. So yeah. I'm, out on, I'm out on the street, you know, everybody's in lockdown, but I'm out on the street with my amplifier. And uh, I'm, I'm, for me, that's very special because I love Christmas carols and the music of Christmas. How about yeah. you? Yeah, I, I, I love the Christmas carols and the traditional Christmas music and as well. And of course, being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, um, if anything, our, our tradition is to try to place him front and center uh, at, as, as the reason why we even celebrate Christmas. Uh, he's the savior of the world. He came into the world so that, that we could get in a right relationship with God and, and to bring righteousness into our land. So uh, to put him front and center as best we can, and we do that uh, with family gatherings. Uh, but one of our fun traditions uh, outside of religious uh, tradition, if you will, is my my wife's family has a history that goes back generations of a special kind of Christmas cookie. And so she is about to get together with our daughter and a couple of our grandkids, and they'll make a special batch of Lepkugan Christmas cookies that um, we will munch on for the next several months because they just last forever. And, uh, <laughs> So that's, yeah. that's the part of our family tradition is carrying on the family recipe of those cookies. That's tremendous. And passing that on to the next yeah. generation and the next. That's yeah. the best. Yeah, they and love it. It's great. Keep Christmas alive. And it, yeah. it's an astonishing year that starting in Easter, virtually every one of our religious and civic holidays, Christian at least, have been collapsed and shut down. And so I don't think they can cancel Christmas. I think people have had quite enough. And we're going to come out on the other end of the spring solstice, and there's going to be more light than darkness. Uh, Amen. Amen. Thank you for a good talk. Okay. Thank you, thank Wes. You. Always, yeah, always a pleasure to talk with you. Same here, sir. Thank All right. you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.